In today's tutorial, we're going to make a procedurally generated forest in After Effects. But the thing we're trying to learn today is how to save a lot of time in After Effects by letting the program do most of the work. So if you're into getting the technical crap out of the way so you can get down to more creative problems, then uh, this might be helpful for you. So first things first, make a new composition, doesn't matter the size, doesn't matter the duration, just make one. Now on the offset of this tutorial, I'm going to tell you right now, this is not an amazing effects to generate. It's not even that interesting. But what we're doing is we're trying to learn a principle that'll take you really far in After Effects. We're going to be figuring out how to procedurally generate something that we can reuse and duplicate so we don't have to make so many instances of things. So in this example, we're going to be taking rectangles and we're going to be populating a forest with them, but we're going to be doing it in a way so we don't have to make so many individual trees. So Follow along and try to keep count of how many actual things we're doing, and then when you try to go back and do the tutorial, just see how fast it goes by. This will be a little bit slower because I'm explaining to you what we're doing and why, but when you do it, just, you know, use an egg timer and figure out how long it takes. So, step one, we're going to go new shape layer, and then we will be adding a rectangle, and we'll be adding a fill. So that's three things so far that we've done. Change the fill to a saturation of none and a brightness of 30 for this first one. Now the rectangle path is where we're going to be having all of these crazy random numbers going on. The first thing we need to do is make sure that the size for each of the rectangles we duplicate is going to be random and different. So we're going to use an expression, hold down alt and click on the stopwatch, and we're going to type in seed random with a capital R and then in brackets we're going to use index and then comma true. Now what this is saying is that the random seed for this expression is going to be using the index number of the layer. So when we duplicate the layer, the next layer is going to have a different random seed than this one. So that's a good way to make sure that everything we do when we duplicate it is going to be different and new and unique. Next thing to do, x equals, and now we're going to use a random number generator, random. And then, and then inside the brackets here, we're going to type in 95 comma 150. So it's going to create a random number that is going to be between 95 and 150 to define the width of every rectangle we duplicate. And it's going to be different for each one of the duplications. So now we put a semicolon at the end of this string. And the next one, y equals 1920. We are not interested in changing the height, so that can be a static number. And then we'll just hit a semicolon there. And the final line is saying your value to export is x comma y inside square brackets. Hit return and it's created a tree or a representation of a tree. It didn't actually grow any trees. So we're going to take the rectangle path and duplicate it. And you can see on the duplication that it has created a slightly different tree. So that's good. At least that first part is working. So delete that thing. I was just doing it to show you. Back into the actual order. And we're going to do something about the position here. So copy this amount of stuff and then Alt click on the position and paste it in there. So now we're going to use a similar method to change the position of this layer. First thing is that the Y needs to be 0 and not 1920 because we don't want to move it too far. So that's good. We want the random value, instead of 95 to 150, go from negative 1920 to 1920, so a big span. Its x value is going to be somewhere between there. Now what happens when we duplicate this? It creates a new one. It's all the way over there. So, so far, this is working out. And then if we duplicate this layer, it's created a whole other set of things. So all we need to do is put in these expressions and then duplicate this rectangle path. Maybe we have three, four, five trees per layer. Maybe that'll be enough. Or if you want more, you go ahead and add more. Uh, the other thing is all of these trees are going to change when we start duplicating the layer. So duplicate the layer, duplicate that layer, duplicate this layer, give it one more. Now we have a whole bunch of trees all over the place that are taking up a lot of space. We're going to just grab all of these layers here, make them all 3D. Now we're going to alter their colors here a little bit. So layer 5, we are fine with being at 30. And then layer 4, we're going to put that at 40. And then layer 3, we're going to put that at 50. Layer 2, 60. Layer 1, we are going to put at 70. So things are getting lighter as they're going back. 
Now we're going to take all of these layers that we have and we're going to need to offset them in 3D space. So, so we're just going to move the furthest back layer until it's sort of edging at the frame here. And that's going to be at around 1920 going back. So that's as deep as you need to put layers. Now the next layer, let's uh, go ahead and look at its position. We can put that back there at uh, say 1600. Next layer, its position, maybe at around 1200. Position of layer four, 800. And then layer five, I'm good with this being right up in our face. So now we need to create a new camera and 50 millimeter preset is fine. As you can see, as we create new layers, all of the layers are shifting around again. Just remember that, that as you're adding layers, it's changing the index values so it's going to create new layers. So now we're going to create a new solid that will serve as our background. And we're just going to make a light blue, so hue of 200, saturation 10, brightness 80, and then put that in the background. Now I'm going to create a new adjustment layer, which will serve to add effects and stylize this a little bit. Now we're gonna go into the camera here and set up its position change. And the first thing to do with this is to go layer, transform, auto orient, and take the auto orientation off. Now we're just gonna move the position over to where it's clear of the woods. And at this point, we're fine to animate. And that's only because we've added all of the layers we're gonna do. Using this method and referencing the index is good, but one of the limitations is it'll always change what the layer looks like when you start adding more layers. So, then we go to the end here, and we would like for it to have traveled all the way through the woods. Okay, it looks like we're clear. Grab those positions and easy ease them. Play that through, and it's like we are zooming through the woods. Whoosh. So, the rest of the things to do here now are just to stylize the layers. So, one of the things I did was I added a ramp and this ramp has a start that's around here and it has an end that's down around here. Ramps are great for styling layers. I'm gonna set the blend with original to be around 50. We are going to give it a, a nice, sort of like a dark purple here up at the top. And then down at the bottom, we're gonna give it, give it like a yellowy orange down there. That's good, kind of like, uh, kind of like evening light. Now we're going to also apply a tint just take some of that color out, maybe 80% tint, good. See how that looks drifting by. And we're also going to apply a noise, and this is a type of noise, it's called Noise HLS, and put that above everything. And what this does is it's basically gonna apply an amount of texture back there, just to make it look a little bit more interesting. So we're just gonna go with a lightness of 5% to add a little bit of grain in here. And then because I don't really like how pixelated it is, I'm gonna use a fast blur on top of that and then repeat the edge pixels and set the fast blur to like two. So everything is getting a little bit blurry out there, but you know, it's also adding a little bit of texture with that. As you go through, you can see that it's, it's looking a little bit textured and it's looking a little bit gradiated and it's just making it a little bit more visually interesting than it was before. And the way we've got it set up with the layers in the back being lighter, it's kind of emulating the idea of fog, like we're going through like a misty Scottish moor forest thing. Now if you're going through and you're thinking, man, some of these trees are pretty sparse and you want more, well it's really quick to just add more. Just boom, some more trees out there. I want some more, okay, boom. I just duplicate that and there are even more trees out there. This is, this is so easy. So it's this kind of thing that just, that helps you save a lot of time. Too many trees, well, just delete some, I don't care. Just delete some of these ones, delete these ones. No one will ever notice that it only took you a couple seconds to do that. Hopefully these are some methods that can save you a lot of time on your projects. Look for ways, always, that you can kind of cheat the system and make sure the program is doing more work than you. So we've created here, we're basically looking at five trees per layer times five layers, that's 25 things. But we've spent less time than actually drawing out five things and positioning them ourselves. Is it a little bit less accurate? Yeah, but isn't it accomplishing the exact same thing? I could have manually positioned these things, I could have, but that's not an effective use of my time. I know that I wanted things to be randomly moved around, and I also know that if I ever become upset with how things are, and I'm like, you can just use, instead of the index value, you can just type in something and make it a fixed value. So 
that's totally your prerogative as well. And you'll discover as you find more techniques that the less time you spend having to technically do things, and the more time you can think creatively about why you're doing them and what you want to create, the better your products are going to be. So, I'm Evan Abrams. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial about After Effects. I guess also about design process in general. Uh, the tutorial itself was very basic, but we will be getting into more advanced things eventually. Coming up into July, it's going to be uh, an interesting time. I think you'll like what I do in July. Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching. If you like After Effects tutorials like these, tune into the channel and subscribe. There's a new one up every Saturday. And sometimes there's vlogs and talking about new features in After Effects and all that fun stuff throughout the week. So you should check me out on Twitter and on Facebook so we can, we can get social and uh, subscribe to this channel if this is a thing you like. Thanks a lot for watching. Again, I'm Evan Abrams and I'll see you around the internet.